Hello and welcome back to the Writer's Block, or if you're here for the first time, just welcome. I apologize, I am late uploading my review of Rings of Power episode 5, but that's because I am late watching episode 5. I just lost all motivation to continue this series and I really had to summon the, the willpower to continue. Uh, episode 4 was just, it was so boring. and. There was a sense that at the end of episode four, maybe they were finally building towards something for episode five, but sadly, that didn't turn out to be the case. For some reason, almost nothing happened in episode five. It's really bizarre. The only two things of consequence I can kind of see are that half of the Sutherland's people left and went to swear fealty to Adar and his orcs. And then maybe Nori is now scared of Meteor Man's magical powers. Um, other than that, I mean, especially in Numenor, nothing happened of consequence. Uh, I think if you just took the very last few minutes of episode four, where it's like building up, building up in Numenor, and they're recruiting all these people and announcing that they're going to Middle-earth, to the Sutherlands, to fight the orcs, and then you just cut straight to the end of episode five where Galadriel walks on the ship and all the soldiers are there and they're sailing off like you would miss almost nothing and that's problematic to me that that the show spends so much time and stuff that can just be cut completely uh this episode did see the return of the Harfoots and they turn out to just continually be terrible um yeah, I mean, honestly, honestly, I've always said this, the show looks fantastic, and it does. It continues to do so. Those shots of the migration and the Brandyfoot wagon going across these beautiful landscapes, those are stunning, um, really beautiful. And I, I didn't mind the song. Tolkien's uh, writing has lots of songs, and so it's kind of fitting to put a song in there at some point. Um, I didn't mind it as, as much as maybe some people might, um, but... <laughs> but I think the rest of the Harfoots, they're just, uh, they're just kind of creepy, right? Like the, the Lenny Henry's wife, Harfoot lady, she is like, wants to take off the wheels of the Brandyfoot wagon and leave them for dead. And it's like, this hasn't worked out. Why? And her reasoning is because like, oh, bad things are happening to us. Well, this really hasn't worked out for you in the past when you've left other Harfoots to die. What makes you think it's going to be any different now? It's just... They're just not that likable. I think Nori and Poppy are pretty likable and the wizard dude, but they also shouldn't be in the story. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, and this, it's, I just, I don't know. I shouldn't be rooting for the wolves to like get one of the Harfoots, but I was rooting for the wolves to, to get the, uh, the Lenny Henry's wife. I don't know what, um, I don't know what her name is. I have no idea. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of the Harfoots. Nothing really happened with them. They're just still migrating. Gandalf guy, not Gandalf guy, shows off his powers. Um, so yeah, that's 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 it. That's it. That's all that happened with them. And <laughs> this one's a bit of a nitpick, I, I admit. But uh, <laughs> I thought it was funny when not Gandalf was like learning words and practicing with Nori. And he's like, kill? And she's like, yeah, that means to make something dead. And it's like, and he like gets it. And it's, it's funny to me because like you understand dead and like make something dead, but you don't understand kill. I don't know. It's really hard to portray people learning like a language from nothing. But that, that to me, just that one to me, I just, I had a chuckle. And that, that's a nitpick for sure. But what else in this? Uh, Galadriel, Galadriel sword fighting wasn't uh great she, that whole thing where she's like i'll teach you how to kill an orc you stab twist and gut and that is just uh yeah it's like thanks galadriel i had no idea that that would kill an orc it might be might be a slow death but no idea that that would work and then she goes on and it's just like an excuse to show off how cool galadriel is oh she can she can fight so many people well, great, but isn't she supposed to be, like, teaching them? There's not, like, a whole lot of teaching that's happening in this instance. 
she's just, I don't know, the whole scene was just felt like it was a, choreogra a choreographed dance, not like an actual fight scene, not an actual training sequence. And there were multiple times where there were people standing around. They're all getting up on her, and there's multiple times where there's people standing around, and they could have easily just, like, they're standing behind her with her sword, and she's not guarded, and they could have just easily taken her out. And that's that's another thing that really bugs me about these type of fighting scenes is that the, the people are, like, swinging like they're, they're going to kill. Like, if any of those hits actually landed, it would cause severe injury, possibly death, depending on the blow. And it's just like... This is not this is not how soldiers train. This is not realistic. Um, it's the whole thing was just kind of dumb. The score was great. The score was really great. Oh, yeah. I uh, the elves the elves continue to be kind of baffling in this series. Their decisions they make are dumb. It kind of sounds like they actually that Gil Galad actually knew that. Uh, the evil was still out there, and he was trying to send Galadriel away. Like, by not fighting the evil, like, the evil would cease to spread. Like, that logic just makes no sense. Like, you don't, like, not fight something to make it go away, right? <laughs> like, it's just... I don't. I didn't understand the whole thing with the tree either. Why is the tree decaying? Why is that tied to the elves? Like, their, their lives, and they're dwindling, and... Uh, it, and how is that tied to Mithril? I mean, the animation of this apocryphal legend of Mithril was really cool, really beautiful. But at the same time, it's like, that's not at all how Mithril works. And it's problematic because anyone who's read the Silmarillion or other Tolkien writings is going to be more familiar with the legends of the, the Silmarils. And they're going to know that that's not how things went. So either the elves are wrong or they're right and it's completely you know does not com adhere to canon at all um and i think also anyone watching that if they're paying attention they're going to be like what the heck is a silmaril if they're not acquainted with tolkien's other writings um like why is this important at all and so it just it doesn't make a lot of sense the choices that they continue to make um and i thought it was funny that that uh <laughs> gil Gallant's like did they find the ore? And and Elrond's response is like, I swore an oath. And it's like, okay, so the answer is, so you're saying yes. Like, in what context would that ever mean? Like, no, they didn't find the ore. I swore an oath not to tell. Like, it's like a kid going to their parent being like, did your brother take the cookie from the cookie jar? And the other kid's like, I, I promised I wouldn't tell. It's like... Then, 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 yes, obviously. Uh, lastly, I guess, is that um, the whole thing with, I don't know, Farazan's son's name, Guy, other dude, <laughs> Roman-looking dude, he, things escalated really quickly for him. I think he was, like, talking to his dad. He's like, why are you, like, supporting this? Why are you allowing this? And his dad's like, oh, it'll open up all these trade routes and da-da-da-da-da, political maneuvering. And then things escalate really quickly because, like, the next scene, he's going onto a boat to burn it, to commit arson against the military of his own country. <laughs> and it's pretty baffling. And at the same time, I'm like, wow, this these ships are unguarded. And it, I guess it's par for the course because Numenor is supposed to have, like, this fantastic army, and yet they're, like... Galadriel's training them in like this this alley next to like the market and there's only like a handful of soldiers this is supposed to be an army that Sauron himself actually feared to face but you know whatever that aside their ships are unguarded kid just sneaks on he I don't know what the heck was in those kegs but it must have been nitroglycerin or uh you know just something super explosive not wine apparently because those things went up like wow like dynamite and i don't know why a sealed door like defends the he covers for the other dude Farazan's son i have no idea why he covered for him that didn't make sense at all because the sealed wants to go on this journey wants to be a part of this mission um and then i have no idea why no one like investigates the two 
the why are no more questions asked? Why is there no sort of investigation? The only two people that were even near the explosion that you pulled from the water that you can kind of tie to the event, they're less like, mm, I don't know. I don't know what they were doing there. They just, they were in a fishing boat for some reason. Who knows? Like, yeah, it must have been those brigands, right? That's what they said. So, um, yeah, I mean, the last, last thing, maybe a nitpick as well, but the whole thing with the Sutherlands where uh, Theo shows the broken hilt to Erendir, and Erendir's like, oh, it's a key. And also, I've seen this statue here, and like rips off these vines in this tower that had been occupied by the elves right i think it's like a fortress that the elves had occupied but it's like why is there a statue of sauron here why did the elves not tear it down why was there no setup for this statue of sauron does it mean anything else other than like oh i guess this is sauron's sword um but yeah i mean like i said in the beginning by the end of this everyone's exactly pretty much exactly where they were in the beginning the harfoots are still migrating um, the Sutherlands and Erendir, those people are still waiting for the orcs to attack, and the Numenorians are just barely leaving to sail, just like I thought they were at the end of episode four. Uh, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on this show. I guess I'll keep watching it, and I'll try to upload the next one sooner and be on time. And, you know, I'd love to hear what you thought of episode five, if if you are enjoying the show, I'd love to actually hear why. What do you like about the show? Um, yeah, let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more of these videos in the future, uh, feel free to subscribe. I invite you to do so. And I hope to see you guys back here soon.